my name is Andreas Berg. Uh, I'm uh, introducing myself on this slide. I've already been introduced. Thank you for inviting my talk. Um, I'm working as an IT architect at Gematic, and I will tell uh, you uh, soon what uh, Gematic is doing. My professional interests are in technologies and methods for high assurance, trustworthy IT systems and confidential computing. I've been involved in some major projects within Gematic uh, that are to provide uh, e patient records as well as e prescriptions. Um, uh, and I've been doing security architecture for these, for these projects, not alone, but with colleagues. I'm also involved in future platform architecture development. Now, G Gematic is a public company founded in 2005 by law, by national legislation. And uh, its owners, its shareholders are the Ministry of Health, first of all, and um, various associations of health insurers and medical professionals and pharmaceutical professionals in Germany. And we are the governing, governing entity for um, what we call telematics infrastructure, an infrastructure aimed at uh, uh, net connecting all healthcare professionals and also the insured. And we provide a number of smart cards that are uh, for the insured on the one hand and for uh, practitioners on the other hand to um, be able to securely authenticate and to also carry data while well, this is a sort of legacy. Uh, there is a dedicated VPN-based network infrastructure and there are of course the basic network services uh, for this infrastructure as well as applications. And our job is to um, write specifications to ad admit uh, pro uh, products and services into the infrastructure. And uh, some for some of these products, we also contract the providers um, directly because uh, if they are central um, services. And we are striving towards uh, becoming a national digital he health agency uh, in Germany. Um, the main applications that we have are uh, smart card based applications for insurance information, basic data, um, medication plan and emergency uh, data. We uh, provide communication services for, for the uh, practitioners, for the professionals, and we also uh, do e-patient records and e-prescriptions. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. The environment that we are in uh, with our e-prescription services is characterized by a few uh, numbers. Um, first of all, there are 82 million people in Germany. Uh, everybody is insured and uh, they all receive uh, 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 prescriptions and choose the pharmacy to go to or to order online from uh, to get their medication. There is 100,000 doctor's offices. There is almost 2,000 hospitals, 60, almost 65,000 pharmacies, uh, almost 150 insur insurers. And that leads to overall around 500 million uh, prescriptions per year. And these need to be stored, assigned in the workflow for dispense and processed. The e-prescription service is the second um, service that we built on confidential compute technology. Traditionally, our infrastructure was decentralized and uh, the telematics infrastructure was basically just transport infrastructure with all the facilities for secure authentication and uh, digital signatures and stuff like that. But for these applications, e-patient records and e-prescription, we move to server-based storage. And in e-patient records, we are not 
uh, processing documents on the server, just metadata that is used to search within the patient records for um, the appropriate documents needed for the um, treatment situation. The documents are end-to-end -end encrypted. They are also stored there centrally. And this um, index data that we use for, for the search is persisted in an encrypted form on, on the service, but it's decrypted to be searched. And that is built within an enclave in Intel SGX. ePrescription service is the second evolutionary step in this process of uh, applying confidential compute technology to our application environment. It also processes all data in clear text within an enclave. It provides a Firebase uh, client interface or API that is the resource-oriented um, healthcare information standard that we use now. Uh, it provides full server-side input validation and data processing. We persist data in a time-stamped manner so that we can derive uh, encryption keys or decryption keys, which are the same, um, uh, based on the time slices that the data uh, has been persisted in. We use Intel SGX enclaves and we implement a small trusted computing base in C, C++ based on Grammar. The implementation is done by IBM. Um, we use an attestation scheme that is uh, an integrated enclave-based SGX attestation plus TPM-based measured boot attestation for the surrounding OS stack. Uh, to be able to uh, protect the the stack from in from uh, runtime manipulation, because we don't hundred percent rely on just SG, SGX protections or isolation properties. The attestate uh, the attester is an HSM cluster that is administered in multi-party fashion, as usual. And it provides an interface for the TSL authentication, a TLS authentication process to the clients so that only attested enclaves may be able to use this interface and thus uh, be auth authenticated as the e-prescription service that we provide. Also, the HSMs are used to derive keys for persistence. So why did we choose this technology uh, as opposed to our traditional approach of using decentralized uh, 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 systems to actually process data? And that is a decentralized means at the user who is owning or creating the data. So first of all, central data validation and processing is a necessity for this service for e-prescriptions because we uh, had, would have to have, uh, we, we would have had a very hard time to realize this uh, solution using end-to-end -end encryption. Um, when a prescription is issued, the, the uh, the patient decides on where to get the medication from. So to, the choice of dispenser happens late in the process after the data has already been stored and it happens ad hoc. And uh, it can happen uh, through a patient that only has the smart card uh, for accessing the, the facilities that is uh, a passive device. So the service needs to be able to control uh, access to uh, the prescriptions uh, based on, on ad hoc uh, events happening. So the service controls the workflow and this would be very hard without uh, providing 
the data in an unencrypted form because then you would have to decrypt or you would have to have it encrypted for the recipient, which is the pharmacy. Also, we have a very large variety of client systems involved in the process for creating uh, prescriptions and for dispensing prescriptions, as well as a, an interface for the uh, insured to handle their own prescriptions and also uh, uh, use their smartphones to choose the dispenser, for instance. So we needed a single point of control in order to maintain interoperability by input validation and security. Um, other effects of choosing this design were to accelerated release cycles because this um, e-prescription service is uh, targeting not only the basic prescriptions, but also some, some uh, special types of prescriptions possible in in, uh, un, in Germany for special medica controlled medication, as well as for some uh, tools for accidents and stuff like that. We have a faster incident response if we have a professional operating environment, an operator, and um, we have in an overall overreaching security perspective, we have the benefits of a highly controlled operating environment and that we take seriously, uh, which means that we have isolated cages to run the infrastructure. We have even locked racks for those servers that run the trusted computing base, that is the SGX enclaves, and there's, uh, uh, there's, super, uh, there's supervision by cameras and stuff like that. The, the whole design here um, is a major shift in paradigm for us, for the thematics infrastructure. As I said, it was mainly used for transport end-to-end -end encrypted data previously. So our focus is on technical security measures, that is measures that are independent to a certain extent of the organizational environment that uh, the service runs in, even though that's strictly controlled. And that's why we chose Intel SGX as a platform for um, its capability of isolating processes um, that are under control of the operator on the one hand and the application uh, processing the sensitive data on the other hand. And because of its attestation capabilities, that is to actually provide the information about the security uh, of the environment transparent in a, in a way that is controlled not by just the operator, but also by us representing the interests, the security interests of the insured and the other players as well. So we also um, implemented the service um, as an open source solution because uh, of the transparency that can be provided through that means and because we think that there is a, a difference between trusted and trustworthy and that trustworthy also implies that you know what you are trusting and uh, that transparency is provided by open source. I just want to spend, I'm not sure how far I am in terms of time, but um, I just want to spend a couple of minutes of, uh, to talk about our future explorations in the field of confidential compute. First of all, because this field is rapidly developing, uh, it's one of the main aspects of our future uh, explorations is to actively follow uh, this process of, of uh, confidential computing going into full maturity, becoming a commodity uh, infrastructure 
feature. We also want to um, reduce the efforts that have to go into providing each individual services by uh, exploring the field of scalable, elastic, multi-tenant platform as a service design, aka cloud, not necessarily public cloud though. And uh, this entails a number of, of items that we want to look at and are looking at. First of all, it's stateless uh, data center compute, uh, which changes the requests, uh, which, which makes the request context basically the, the focus of the security guarantees. Um, we, uh, this is a field that needs some performance optimizations and we want to uh, also uh, provide an application agnostic TCB stack that can be uh, used in, in multiple applications to provide the foundation for, for them. Basically a container runtime environment. We are looking at models of that, that would allow us to adequately represent uh, our governance role in the field of digital healthcare, uh, digital yeah, healthcare services um, in Germany, which is something that acts as an intermediary, intermediary be between the platform provider, the technology provider and the users and with, with the applications. Uh, we want to optimize the root of uh, trust construction. That is, um, make it even more multi-party and uh, also take key provisioning instead of uh, HSM interfaces. That is to rely more on the confidential compute technology to even be able to provision the keys into this environment for the service. Um, we need some encryption schemes for data persistence. And there should be some generic schemes available for uh, applications to use uh, in order to provide a, a functional platform layer. The general idea is to have some key derivation scheme that allows uh, somewhat application independently or maybe a number of, of these schemes to make uh, to provide a gen generic persistence interface within the enclave. Also, as everybody, I guess, who's attending this uh, uh, talk would uh, know, um, it's a, the, the evolution of confidential com computing is a ongoing process and we are looking at um, what we what is needed for the application development which is of course the application itself is part of the trusted computing base so there needs to be there need to be good languages or good uh, tools for inspecting um, the the code as well as su support for fire or our data uh, uh, or interface standard, because that's uh, quite a complex standard. Um, also, we want to continue strengthening the trusted computing base, and that is uh, formalize more of the specifications and to um, uh, get a tighter binding between source code on the one hand and what is actually then deployed and measured within the enclave and, and uh, uh, attested to um, uh, at runtime. And this ends my talk. Thank you for listening. Sorry for the late appearance. And I guess uh, there will now be questions and answers.